Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series and Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with the launch of the Quarter Pounder, which is a supply delivery vessel for the surface of the moon. So we're trying to supply our moon base and uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, after that I have another test of the Lunapod, which is the Gemini capsule landing on the moon and we've changed that up with Gemini lander engines which throttle properly so hopefully that landing will be a little bit smoother and uh, I've fixed other things that were uh, problematic with the previous launch and after that I, we might try the crewmaster in the career mode instead of in sandbox um, I heard your comments and so uh, we'll just do further testing in here I have not tested it uh, outside of this uh, so uh, we will continue testing it in career mode then and so it will cost us um, but uh, that'll be the only concession I make I'm not gonna add additional costs after all it's not fair that Kerbal Space Program doesn't have like a wind tunnel or like uh, the kind of basic testing that NASA was able to do if NASA had been limited to our resources here there's no way the first shuttle mission would have been a success so let's uh, you know let's balance things out a little bit so anyway, this is the Fiji 2R1, which means it has the RD270 on the center and two F1 boosters. And let me just take a look at that. We already lined up with the moon as far as inclination is concerned. Um, this seems to be loaded in properly. Fairings are occurring at a reasonable time. Um, they might actually have to go before this staging. I'm gonna set that there first and we'll see uh, depends on how long the core lasts okay uh, but otherwise that seems fine to me run Fiji 2R1 okay off it goes I remember having gimbal problems, didn't I? Seems to be all right now. Okay, booster separation now. There we go. No problems. We are uh, pointed directly at the moon now. Okay, there go the fairings. So there's the quarter pounder, and it's got the uh, KIS containers, and also, of course, the connector ports. Got a lot of stuff. Uh, this is the food, water, and oxygen being delivered, and outboard is the fuel. There's a transfer stage. I hope this tank doesn't have the boil off that, uh, problem that the Lunapod did. It might. We'll try and get it going as soon as possible. It doesn't seem to be boiling off right now, so that's good. Oh, wait, but it has to not have boil off all the way to the moon. Forgot about that. Yeah, that's our capture stage. Well, good thing I did put a docking port on it. So if you want to, we can uh, dock to the station and refuel this if it needs to capture around lunar orbit all on its own. Okay. We're gonna, I mean, at 4,000 meters per second, trying to recover that is dodgy, but it is configured for recovery. Delta V-wise, I'm not entirely sure about this right now. It's very tight on the Delta V. We should probably have also gone into a somewhat lower orbit, maybe 210 instead of 270. 270 is sort of my default for the launch scripts. Okay, we are making orbit. And shut down 276 by 233. And yeah, so we've got 2,000 in this stage, which means that we're going to need about 1,100 from the next stage in order to complete our transfer. And that has 1,880. So that's like maybe enough to capture into lunar orbit, but then you're probably going to need some of this. To finalize that, of course we don't have to rendezvous with the station. 2,556 should be enough for landing, but yeah, it's all very tight. 
All right, uh, time to plot for the Mundo. I'm going to extend the solar panels. Okay, so I'm figuring that by the time we actually get there, uh, which is in about four days, that Lunapod, which is and the base, which is currently over here, will have rotated to a location under that orbit. So that's the plan. And we will see if that is correct. But this is our plot right now, and the node is in one hour and ten minutes. Okay, we are aimed at the node for translunar injection and ignition. Okay, and that's the end of that stage. Make sure everything is all right, set, and ignition. Oh yeah, we should have just enough in this stage to make orbit around the moon if it doesn't boil off too much. So that's the question. Okay, and that's 800 meters per second there for everything else. Let's see, it doesn't really matter which way around we're going, of course, since we're not rendezvousing with the station in this case. Okay, so that's a reasonable approximation of what I wanted. And if we add a maneuver and capture, my assumption continues to be that Lunapod will end up underneath that orbit, and we will see if that is the case. And it looks like, again, we have just enough to make orbit with this stage, though probably there will be boil off, and we won't have quite as much. Um, I could uh, circumvent boil off by just not paying attention to the vessel, but let's see how bad it is. 50 days of supplies at Moon Base 1 right now. So this is sort of a priority mission at this point. And it does need to be hooked up right with those little, uh, it really needs to get to like 25 meters to the base, otherwise it's not going to be able to resupply it. So that's another th trick, especially since we don't have a huge margin on the Delta V. Well, if we take a look, it is indeed the case that Lunapod is approaching this orbit, not quite there, so we will probably need to wait in orbit around the moon a little while, but that's fine, the lander stage itself has hypergolic fuels. Okay, checking the propellants, it's good. Ignition. It would have been nicer for this to have a little bit of an excess of propellant so that we could crash it into the moon. As it is, it's going to remain in orbit around the moon. Actually, the RCS on here might be good enough to make the final adjustments, but <laughs> I need to lock these. Otherwise, uh, all that's going to be used up. Okay, actually... Oh, well... I don't know. Do we have? We don't have enough electric charge. I was thinking of using the remaining RCS fuel to deorbit this stage, but we would need electric charge on this stage in order to control it. It does have a controller here, um, but that's not going to be useful without charge. So, no luck there. Okay, uh, let's decouple now. I've had enough of that. Okay, prepare this stuff. Unlock the tanks. Okay, wait. Feed pressure too low. Ah, shucks. Well, the the tank on the previous stage might have been right, but these are apparently not service module tanks. Well, that's a bust. Okay, well, <laughs> so far so good, but uh, at this point is uh, now... Uh, orbital depot going in the opposite direction of our station and it cannot land. Okay, well, that's just gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, we do have one, another one already built, so there is another quarter pounder ready to go, so we'll just edit that, but next perhaps we'll try a Lunapod, though that's risky of course, but what isn't. Okay, well, 
I don't think I can just straight up change the design and set it to service module because these were balloon tanks. And I, I think I know why they were balloon tanks. Obviously, that wouldn't work for the Gemini lander engines, but I think it's because the original engines I used were those uh, frigate engines, uh, these guys, the same ones that I put on the original Lunapod. And of course, that would be great and all um, if I thought they would be safe to land with them, but it's not really safe to land with them as we saw with the previous Lunapod. So I would like the Gemini lander engines, but obviously we can't have balloon tanks with them. Uh, so we have to keep the overall mass. There's no way the launcher is going to get the resupply vessel over to the moon with more mass. So we've got to keep the mass 14.884 tons. I guess we can see how much we need to reduce the actual food, water, and oxygen we deliver. Okay, 3.7 tons. Let's just go with this. And I'm going to put the Gemini capsule back on. And how many days is that? Oh, 293. So no problems. Yeah, I guess we can go with this. Uh, let me make sure that um, all the tanks are the same. Okay, and we just need a few days to change it, hopefully. Let me just verify. Uh, this was balloon cryo, but at least it's cryo, and it worked. I was satisfied with its, with its abilities. Okay, hopefully everything else is happy with the situation. Okay, so, oh, it says that will only take five minutes to change this. That seems nice. I guess, well, I mean, we changed the utilization of a tank, and we changed the type of a tank. Changing the type of a tank is remarkably easy to do, apparently. I mean, I guess they don't need to build a new one. You just you just have one of those lying around. Huh? All right, um, save edits. Okay, well, it didn't take very long to fix up the quarter pounder, so here we are again and we'll try it again. So let me edit the Fiji 2R1 and what we want to do is get into a somewhat lower orbit this time would be better. So 210 kilometers, not that it'll be precise like that, the script doesn't work that way but it'll, um, it'll try. So here we go, we are lined up. Uh, the situation probably isn't going to be quite as nice as it was last time where our, the orbit that we got into would have allowed for a landing pretty quickly. I don't know if I can get such an easy time of it this time. Probably not. So here we go. I sense some wiggliness here. If there are any gimbal problems... No? Not so far. Okay, looks good. So I've uh, added the Crew Master A to our build list, and I made some changes. First of all, the little RCS ports that we used on there are supposed to have better heat protection than the normal RCS ports. They have embedded nozzles, and they're supposed to have heat shielding. The problem is that Realism Overhaul um, edits all the max temperatures all at once, and then didn't edit these RCS ports specifically to have the increased shielding. The original part has increased shielding, but RO automatically sets everything to 1073 degrees Kelvin, and they didn't add the additional fix for this to suit the part. So I just edited it to have the proper heat tolerances. And uh, also, I changed the aerodynamics a little bit. I increased the size of the canard so that uh, our center of lift move forward and decrease the size of the control surfaces in the back a little bit. Uh, that will give us a little bit less pitch authority during the whole flight phase, but uh, overall better pitch authority when we're trying to use the RCS ports to hold ourselves. So we'll see about that. Still going to try it without crew. There they go. 
and so everything else is sort of a here we go again kind of thing. We just saw this launch. It is overshooting right now, and we have a lot of time to have lapses. But it is pitching down. There go the fairings. Well, if I really want to limit the apoapsis, I'm going to have to let, let it pitch down a little bit quicker than it did. We'll see. Alright. Our engine is poised for recovery, though. I didn't get a message from the last time, so I think it probably burns up anyway. What has happened? Please, game. Okay, okay. Game is alright. Um, yeah, so I think Stage Recovery just thinks that that blows up. I don't think Stage Recovery is buying that, that that bit can be recovered. So if we really want to recover that engine, we're going to need to put a heat shield at least, or do something else. So yeah, Stage Recovery isn't that lenient, <laughs> going 4,000 meters per second to recover something without a heat shield or, or uh, yeah. Okay, we are making orbit, and it's 227 by 166, so that's definitely lower than last time. Alright, and we have a little bit extra in this stage right now. Alright, let me plot for the moon. Okay, we have our plot, we are currently turning, and hopefully it'll get us into a position where we can land quickly, but no guarantees. Okay. Ignition. All right, set and ignition. We should be in roughly the same sort of situation as we were last time. Let's get the solar panels out. Oh, okay, well, that wasn't my fault in particular. Uh, test flight decided to jump on us. <laughs> oh, great. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's not going to work out. I mean, we could dock this to the station, I suppose. Yeah, all right. Uh, so we're we're changing our plan. We're going to dock to the station instead. Oh, that's a lot of trouble. But yeah, well, what can we do? Definitely not gonna keep it around here. I mean, it's uh, it's already you know been boosted up quite a lot. But I definitely didn't aim this with the intent of rendezvousing with the station, so we're going to have to work something out. We do not have enough fuel to directly land, there's just no way. Actually, that's interesting. We could try and rendezvous with the previous <laughs> Lunapod and get fuel from it, couldn't we? Hmm, which would be worse? <laughs> uh, well, right now we're uh, targeting... Uh, oh, no, I didn't want to switch to it. Ah, dang it. Okay, well, I've opted to rendezvous with the station instead of the previous attempt at the quarter pounder, and that's because the inclination with respect to the other quarter pounder would have been fairly great, whereas the inclination with respect to the station after a mid-course adjustment was only 2.4 degrees. So this was obviously just the easier way to go. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the other quarter pounder is just sort of sitting there and the station fuel could be used for other things so sort of a choice based on convenience rather than necessarily the best option but uh, well we can very easily get uh, rendezvous okay uh, we have a very good close approach distance right there yep no problems now meeting up with the station. At this point I wish this used UDMH and N204 just so that we could use that fuel over there. 
Okay, we have docked. And, well, let's see now. Not all the resources are actually popping up there. And we have a lot to fill up. Well, that's a lot of Arizina and 204 right there, so that's a good sign. Okay, we're all fueled up, but we're going to have to wait here for a while uh, because of the location of the base. We're talking more than a week. So maybe we should launch another mission in the meantime, and that means testing out the Lunapod G. Now that means sending another Kerbal over here, uh, another Kerbal at risk, but uh, we got to try that out. So I'll send it over. Probably we won't land that just yet in this episode. We'll wait for the next episode to land that. But we'll have it transferring over here while we wait. And maybe have it uh, capture and uh, dock with the station temporarily uh, prior to landing. So that we can get on with this mission and land this mission first. Okay, so here we go for launch with the Lunapod G. And we've uh, hired a new Kerbinaut. This is Felipe Kerman. Uh, potentially named after the creator of KSP, uh, so that's maybe a good omen? I don't know. We'll find out. Again, we do have to have the Gemini capsule crewed, uh, because otherwise I have trouble controlling anything. Um, I forget if somebody's mentioned some fix for that, but anyway, let's just proceed. Run Fiji 21. Okay, off it goes. Interesting nozzle twitch at the start, but uh, it ends up being in the right location. Okay, we have one engine shut off to limit G-forces. Okay, we have staging and second stage ignition with the J2. And everything is looking nominal. Okay, we have made orbit. We do have enough fuel for the transfer. So everything's looking good so far. Let's get to it. Okay, we are turning for translunar injection. We are aiming to rendezvous with the station. Uh, though, depending on the situation once we get there, if we can land directly at the base, we'll try. But it's always good to be on a trajectory suited for the station just in case. So uh, here we are pointed at the node. And in a little bit, we'll be ready to ignite. Engine says it's very stable. Okay, ignition. And off we go. Oop, a little bit too far. Okay. Ooh, lots too far. By the time we get there, the station's inclination should be good to meet, to land at the the surface space. Which means once we make orbit around the moon, we too will have a fairly good inclination to land at the surface space. So we could skip the station altogether if it seems reasonable to do so. But you can see our inclination right now is nowhere near the stations. So we will have to make a correction. Okay, let's keep it there and then separate off. Oh, actually, you know what? We should have it on a crash course to dispose of that stage. Okay. There we go. And that should be right. Okay, the force did not do enough to kick us, so let's lift that orbit. And all is well. Okay, let's extend panels. And this time we should have a cryogenic tank here, so there's no, well, there's minimal boil off, I should say. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in Lunar SOI, actually approaching Lunar Periapsis. Well, not quite our Periapsis because that's a little bit low. We're actually doing the burn ahead of it. Um, we have had boil off. We didn't do any burns with this engine so far. And so we're going to be using it now with this maneuver to correct our inclination, uh, to correct that Periapsis a bit, and also to capture into orbit. And it says very stable, so ignition. You can see we have just enough for this particular maneuver, but this maneuver does not bring us to a low lunar orbit. It's a um, high lunar orbit, and then the lander is going to have to do the rest, but we're planning to rendezvous with the station anyway, because the base is nowhere near our current orbit, and there's no way we're going to be landing directly at it. So, that's the situation. We'll dock up with the station, and then we'll probably land the supply mission first. And we'll wait on this mission until the next episode. I could have dumped the excess kerosene, but uh, I decided it wasn't worth the trouble. We'll just have to put radiators on this stage next time. Okay, getting ready to shut down. Not that it's necessary. I think we could just let it burn out. Yeah, okay. So now the relative inclination is 0.5 degrees. We've got periapsis of 120 kilometers. And that's a pretty good position. So, separation. Okay. Okay, we are now matching speeds with the target. And we should still have a healthy amount of fuel left over, but not enough to safely land and take off again, so we will have to grab some fuel from the station. And it's a little bit sad because, of course, uh, even though we use only a bit of Delta V for the rest of this rendezvous, that bit of Delta V costs a disproportionate amount of actual fuel units, liters of fuel. Well, you can see the Gemini Lander engine configuration we have here. Three in a row is actually the arrangement I picked. Of course, with the previous engine, it was just one at the center, but that had a little bit more thrust. We sure have a lot of spacecraft attached to this thing right now. That's a spacecraft. This is a fuel transfer vessel. We've got that little lander over there. And we should have the other supply vessel on the opposite side, though it's tough to see with the science lab in the way there. Now, of course, we're docking to another little supply vessel. It's mostly spacecraft. It's mostly not station. <laughs> okay, and we have connection. Okay. Felipe is docked to the station, and uh, we'll have to time warp a little bit before we can start landing operations. So let's see. As far as, uh, we've got 36 days of uh, food, water, and oxygen at Moon Base 1, and you can see it's got a warning now. Okay, we are now ready to attempt a landing with our quarter pounder. And again, we need to land close enough so that they can hook it up to the base. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. So let's undock. Okay, it seems like we are controlling from the quarter pounder, otherwise, we would see Kerbals. So, RCS. It's feeling heavy. 2,685 meters per second should be. should definitely be enough to do a precision landing on the moon. So let's target our base. I have time warped so that um, it's there right now. I need a little bit of uh, gap here because we do want to bring down the Luna Pod as well. We are apparently 10 kilometers from the station, which is good. The node is not pointed at the station, which is also good. Okay, that's a fine enough trajectory. All right, there they are. Um, Luna pod. Well, 
that lunar lander is probably closer. There is moon base one. Okay. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. No, 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 no. Uh, bugger. Okay, 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 okay. We could. We can save this. We can save this. Uh, too bad the engines don't gimbal. Uh, oh, 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 not again. Um, we're a little bit too far, too. Let me retract the panels. Oh, that has an interesting effect. I, I didn't know the panels made the bounce so much. Let me turn off the RCS too. Uh, retract the landing gear maybe. We've got 500 meters per second left. So if some combination of panels actually uprighted us. Ooh, that's close. Um, oh, that was not. Ah. Hmm. Oh, uh, wait a second. Oh, if we could turn around. Probably a Kerbal could knock this over. Okay, so a solar panel that isn't colliding with the surface isn't going to help. These are some pretty serious solar panels. Hmm. Yeah, if only we were pointed that direction. Oh. Okay. This is a positive development. <sighs> Alright. But now we're going to have to land on our bottom, basically. Right. No, okay, just stay upright. Ah, okay, that. Hmm. Not really the. Okay, uh, can you slide in the opposite direction? Uh. Oh, okay. Um, maybe that's close enough. It says 54 meters. That doesn't look like 54 meters, right? Let's go get a Kerbal out to see if they can hook it up. That'll be Bill Kerman. You don't happen to have, uh... I don't know if you even need a drill, actually. Um, inventory. Oh, he's just chattering away. Well, you have a drill. You might as well equip it. Um, considering where that is, we might as well place a port over here. So, it shouldn't be debris, right? There's some lag here. All right. Um, link, link, excellent. Um, I think that's what we need to do, right? I forget whether it's plugged, plug or link. It's been a while. Um, well, now the whole thing is called quarter pounder, which is not right, but we've got the supplies now. Um, let's just rename vessel. 
it's not quarter pounder, it is still moon base one. And um, success, successful delivery of supplies to the moon. <laughs> Um, hey, uh, it worked. So um, I just need to work on my landings a little bit. Uh, I mean, it, it was sort of a, it, it was the proper shape. It was uh, supposed to be sturdy. It's just um, control is sort of lacking because these Gemini lander engines don't have gimbling. And maybe more powerful RCS thrusters might be advisable. Or a reaction wheel. We didn't have a reaction wheel either. So I'll consider that for future updates, but for now, they're resupplied, they're not in danger, and uh, we can try out the Luna Pod next time. And also I'm building, um, which we call it, a Crewmaster A here, so we could try that out as well. So with those being our plans, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.